Welcome to the Three Pillars of D&D cast. Um, this is a YouTube series slash podcast that we're setting up to basically explain the three pillars of, of D&D, which are uh, social interaction, okay. exploration, and combat. And we're going to use those as a, as a, a model for how we explain explain classes, um, you know, different, like, how we do our book reviews, and just, like, how we, how we just, uh, like, we have a lens of, a lens for how we view the world of Dungeons and Dragons, basically, and that's the premise of it, so, yeah. um, we're, we, you know, hope you enjoy and all that, so, but first, in order to do that, we should explain what what those are and what they mean and our interpretations and who of them. And, and who we are as well, I suppose, huh? <laughs> so, we'll start with introductions. We'll start with Tyler. Hello, I'm Tyler. Um... I'm annoying, I guess. <laughs> I mean, anyways, so, uh, my section I decided to explain was the combat side of D&D, because that's the part I know the best. And basically, what, to me, the combat side of D&D is, um, you know, it's like trying to balance and doing the maximum amount of damage while taking the uh, least amount of damage comparatively. So this... You know, this could be achieved by having a lot of health, or staying in the back, or trying to finish off your opponents as quick as possible. Well, but it's also a oh, part. But there's also much strategy in combat too, like abilities and spells to use, position, what types of attacks you use. And there's so much to balance. It's mainly the number crunching side of D and D. Most of it is just calculating numbers and rolling dice. He's so, you know, players that like that kind of stuff, uh, you know, like math nerds, they will really like the, those types of campaigns. Alrighty, and so if you were, if you wanted to make a campaign that focused mostly on combat, what kind of campaign would you do? Um, more like a Coliseum or a Gladiator, like, thing, where you put it into, like, it's Coliseum, and you either fight for your own survival or to gain riches. Is and the whole point is to try to you know survive and you know defeat your opponents. So, like that one may may have like a little social interaction, say because you might be an entertainer or something yeah. like that. Maybe. But it wouldn't have much. Mo you know, it would mostly be focused on combat. Yeah, mostly be focused on. Enticing combat, you know, it might even be if um features for going more head on than staying in the back. Um, but okay, so that's I that, that is a good example. But what about if you wanted to have one with a, a party with more people? Do you, do you think that uh, a party in a coliseum would work, or do you think it, that it would not work that well? That's more if you want to have the players branch out by themselves, or if you want to players to fight each other. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's a good point. All right. So, yeah. so that's good. So that's that's the part that I think a lot of people know about D&D, uh, yeah. right, is the combat. Um, um, I know when I played, because I, I played the older editions, I played second edition and third edition, I completely oh. missed fourth. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm old. Um, but I played in high school when I was, when I, when I was in high school. And I played second edition, went into into third edition, so um, that was what I was familiar with. And it was a lot of combat basis. There was a lot of role playing, social interaction, exploration kind of stuff. Um, my brother happened to be a very good DM, so we got a lot of that. But um, yeah. it was a lot of combat. That's what it was mostly about was combat. And I think that's how what most people view Dungeons and Dragons for a long time as. Um, and it, it has more of the video game aspect. Yeah, and 
every single class is designed to entice us. I mean, of course, fi fighters and barbarians, and heck, even like warlocks and and rogues and paladins, even. Yeah, paladins are meant to f more of the fighting side, but every every class its own. You know, every class is combat features. That's true. It's meant to you know combat. That's like the main main thing of D and D. Well, there you go. I mean, take your gladiator example, uh, you know, Colosseum example. You're probably going to want to stick with, like, fighters and maybe rogues. But I don't even, I'm not sure how well a rogue would do. Yeah, it's not a, a lot big of open area. Yeah, it's kind of a big open area. Warlocks actually think would be really good. Really? Because of Elder Glass. That's a good point. Teacher. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's up? Um... For people who are new to D and D and stuff, like, can you give us like pop culture icons, like you know, anime or like TV show people that would like have a lot of combat? It's like heavily combat based. Take the last TV show oh, you watched with a with a with a guy with a big sword. But like, <laughs> like names. But like Dragon Ball Z, for yeah, example. Dra Dragon Ball Z, um, you know, it's kind of like the. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z, although a lot of D and D isn't about that. Although I guess you could reflavor Elder Glass for you know. yeah, I, I actually there's a monk path called the Way of yeah, the, Sun, the Sun Soul or whatever. That Sun is Soul. basically a Kamehameha. Um <laughs> But yeah, and then I, I mean there's a lot of anime that is basically just fight after fight after fight after fight. That would be an example of a combat yeah. heavy campaign. Oh, sure, mine. That's one. Uh, fairy tale. Well, like yeah, like you know, like Naruto, but like Naruto. Well, you could definitely come up with a lot of the 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 social interaction on those shows too. Like Inuyasha is the same way. So, um, yeah. How would uh, how how does how does combat pertain to character development? Um, combat can pertain to character development. It can cause, you know, some people have a vendetta or, um, you know, like, the, you know, a promise or something to make the world a better place. They might hack and slash monsters to help people, or they, you know, or, or maybe they just want to get stronger as a warrior. Or, heck, sometimes combat can be a, a negative but required thing on the character and can cause, you know, you know, quirks in the character that didn't exist before, like high and paranoia, uh, and, you know, wanting to be armed at all times because they've experienced the horrors of combat, you know, pain and the suffering that they've inflicted on themselves and they've inflicted on others. And happiness in unicorns! Sorry, that was getting, um, dramatic. <laughs> so I just gave this like very intricate and like very philosophical answers to this combat question and I was just like and unicorn well, it's, like, it's getting dark I'm combat sorry combat can actually give your character that sense of fulfillment like a, a job well done accomplishing a goal yeah too. like um, you know like that's that's the moments where a lot of characters get that hero moment is, is combat yeah so you're getting and, and they're getting Sorry. more experience on how to you know, go across this world. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, speaking of which, it, when it comes to D and D and, and doing experience, combat is the easiest one. It's quantified very easily in the, in the monsters manual, and you know any stat block generally has experience that they recommend giving to your player. It is the easiest one to come up with when it comes to experience. And if you're looking for experience for the other parts of D and D, I recommend going to the Unas Arcana Replayer Experience page, where it gives some more um, you know, advice of how to award experience for um, Power. social interaction and exploration. There you go. I just got so many vibes of just like. You're just plugging it or something. No. Oh, I'm no. Dump, Dumpstat actually has a wonderful article about giving experience um, on encounters, like making uh, making your environment and your social interaction into encounters that you can give experience to as well. Um, so I would recommend going to Dumpstat and looking for their article on that, too. It's very good. That's how you sell out. Emma. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Jesse. Um, 
I'm the dad here. Um, uh, we mentioned earlier, I'm old. Um, old. So, I'm going to talk about exploration. Exploration is probably the hardest thing to quantify in Dungeons and & Dragons, and probably the hardest um, campaign to base something around, for, I think, for most people. Um, exploration is everything from, you know, traveling through the woods, from town to town, um, you know, going into dungeons and, and discovering it and finding the traps and disarming them and things like that. Exploration is what happens between the social interaction and between the combat. But I, um, but exploration, like, is anything from, you know, searching out, searching rooms to discover the, the clue, and say, if you're a detective kind of story, to, like, jumping into your dungeons, um, and discovering the traps or figuring out the puzzles and, and things like that, to, you know, like, you know, going to the woods and, Let's see, what else is there? Um, you know, walking through the desert, you know, all these kind of things. But, like, they're really, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to quantify exactly what exploration is, but it, it's the part as, as a DM, you're going to be the part where you're explaining everything to the players, the world they see. It's the world building. It's the, 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 the story that's happening all around the players. Mm -hmm. Um, where they're not talking to the people and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, the class that epitomizes exploration is the ranger. I mean, there's you can as a ranger you can choose to be a ranger of any of the terrains that you might explore in the world, and that's obvious. But then you have the rogue to a certain degree is also about exploration. They're the ones who can pick your locks. They they, they have the best stealth. They they can do. Um, you know, all, all kinds of, of stuff like that, that, um, really let them, like, their perception and insight help them discover things about the world and, and explore it in their own way. They're like, I mean, in a way, the rogues are kind of like the city rangers, but not, you know, like. The goth. Yeah. The goth rangers. There's all kinds of different kinds of ways to interpret <laughs> the rogue. Um. I mean, your fighter doesn't seem like they would explore that much, but without exploring, the fighter has nothing to do in most campaigns. Like, that's how you get your fighter to the place where they start hacking and slashing things. So it, it, it is important. Um, so, I mean, exploring could even be as, as far as, like, finding the secret information in a library. You know, like, there's, there's a lot of ex ways to interpret exploration. So... Um, question? Oh, um, what type of, do you have a type of campaign you would do? That's oh. a lot of exploring. Um, I would. I'd make it up maybe like a, a survival campaign, like a, like a post-apocalyptic survival campaign where yes. you're like, the world has come to ruin and you're expl exploring the wasteland that's left and trying to figure out how you can feed yourself and figuring out maybe yes. even what happened to the world, uh, maybe you don't know. Um, that could be an example. So um, play that. There's, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of games that explore that. Okay, so, so character development and exploration. So that was, is, is, is a harder one, but, because like I said, exploration is just hard in general. But, the the characters ex, ex, exploring this world and everything is kind of the whole thing in a way. Like, like it's like one of the major things you can really, really feel like if your characters are going into the Fey Wild, for example, and the Fey Wild is really crazy and and um, there's just it's just a whole different kind of world and, and their moralities are completely different than the evil good scale that we we as you know regular people see the world generally that can can help develop the characters quite a bit because they've seen a whole different way of viewing the world and like the Feywild for example is just very visual way of of of, of doing it. So that that kind of exploration can change them. Um, I mean going down like say a rapids 
a, a, like a crazy whitewater rapids in your boat and barely surviving it, that's not really a combat, but it's a life and death situation. So it's that kind of exploration can change how the characters view the world and how they can can do things as well. So, so you're saying it gives them a, high, a higher sense of, pers- of perspective? Yeah. Maybe, you know, knowing... And a higher sense of purpose, too. Yeah, a higher sense of purpose. Or, heck, it could... Or to some characters, it can lower, lower their sense of purpose, because, like, well, if there's so many other people, I can't affect that much. But at the same time, you you can have a character that, because they've experienced this world and all the people in it, and all the things they've seen, the, the creatures, they, the, want the help plants, more. they might want to save it more if the, if the big bad guy is coming to destroy the world or something. Yeah. They might, like, because they've experienced the world, they want to save the world. Yeah, it can help give them a motive. Yeah, that can be enough to motivate a character. So, um, yeah, and like, what is a good example of an exploration? And, and like, it, it's hard, like, I'm trying to think about, a lot of Disney movies do a really good job of showing you the world that, yeah. that they care about. Um, well, it's much easier to show than tell a world. Yeah. And and so I thought, like, we, we mentioned Sword Art Online, for example, because mm-hmm. it has a good blend of, of, of all three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it, it, yeah. it does a pretty good job. All right, welcome to the sellout break where we plug our stuff, and if we had sponsors, we plug them. But we don't. But we don't. So if you want to get a hold of us on social media? Um, you can get a hold of us on Twitter at our dorky. Um, Instagram is at our dorky family. And then we have an email as well at our dorky family at gmail dot com. If you want to get a hold of us about. Um, you know, sponsorship or just ask us questions, anything like that. Existence. Exactly. And <laughs> stay tuned um, for our next episode where we're going to be discussing the monk and um, we'll be going over uh, three of the subclasses as well, making characters for them and kind of showing the different aspects of the monk character. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Emma, and I don't have anything to say about myself, so we're going to move on. I do role, I'm the one who's doing role play, like social interactions. Um, I do a lot in my campaigns. I'm DM. A lot, too. Um, social interaction and role playing is all about, like, the accents, who the characters are, and how you're explaining it. Um, it's your character development type column. I'm giving. I'm getting these weird looks, so I assume this is not what they expect me to say. Let's roll with it. <laughs> Just good. keep going. Um, it's a lot about how it's hard to phrase, um, which is weird because yeah, words. Um, <laughs> it's about your interaction yeah! with particular people, yeah, right? Yeah, it's about your interaction with the people of the world, like. NPCs, um, the big bad guy, your other teammates, it's your interactions with things around. Or even just the, the blacksmith or, yeah. or the butcher or whatever. I said NPCs, know. Dad. Well, I know, but... Non-player really characters, know. NPCs. Yeah. But it, um, there are all kinds of NPCs. It's, yeah, like, there's a lot of different ones. There's, you know, the mothers, the children, the people who buy and sell, and the traders. That's the word. <laughs> I'm having troubles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's it. I want questions. Give me questions. I do better with questions than just talking. Uh, all right. You mentioned um, character development. How how do you think it does affect character development? Because you mentioned it, but you didn't go into it. Uh, hate your philosophical questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> character development. Well, um. At the beginning of a campaign, especially if you've never played before, you can kind of grasp that you don't really... I'm assuming this, like, people who's going to watch this either don't know what the pillars are or are people who are new trying to figure it out. 
Yeah. That's what I'm assuming based on this. If you know this, I'm sorry. But, um, people who have never played before don't really have a sense of who their characters are right away. They kind of can just play it out after one session, which is why session zero is always nice. But they kind of have to play out their character for a long time, and people who have played before can get a sense of, my character has gone through this, so they act like this. But over time, like as you play that character, as you make friendships with the, your other players, with the, your other people and your team, um, your character changes evolves, like, maybe they get over their past. Maybe the big bad guy is somebody from their past and they have to go kill them. You, it changes how they, like, the players change how they view their characters, so their characters change as well. Yeah. Oh my god, that was weird, I don't like it. That's <laughs> actually a very interesting um, <laughs> play of view, and it focused more on the players than the characters, which I thought was interesting. Exactly. So, then, okay, so if you were making a campaign that was going to, and you have made campaigns, so what, what are examples of campaigns that are mostly socially based, not combat or exploration as much? Um, well, there's a few I can think of. Um, I'm just going to plug our YouTube channel real quick. I don't know if you're going to change it to a podcast, oh. too. Um, our Dorky Family has my campaign on it that's a lot of role play basing it's called new olympia there's a lot of role playing in there you meet characters i even play a player character um i would do something based around that new olympia for those of you who don't know um is very modern modern world who um is getting reintroduced to magic after losing it for years and millennia it has the greek gods in there because I, I like those, and I know those a little better. And, and to tie the social better. interaction, and yeah. your your gods are interacting with yeah. the characters. Like, you know, you get god interaction with the characters and other people, technically, but you don't see it. Um, another campaign, because I think, I think I should explore this more, because I, I do have another campaign I want to talk about real quick, um, is my campaign that I'm doing for a different group of people. Um, it's all about, like, four different god groups, the Norse god, the Greek god, the Egyptian god, and the Roman gods, um, all trying to live in harmony in a world. Um, and there my players have, um, done a lot of social interaction, which is like other gods, trying to figure out, because they don't remember who they are, um, and, like, trying to figure out who they are and have a lot of social interaction with, like, the kids of towns that they have to save. Of like the adults that they saved. Okay. So I think social interaction could um help with the motive or even change the motive of the character. Oh, I have a perfect example. Okay. Um, in another campaign, I'm, I'm talking about three different campaigns. It's going great. <laughs> I DM a lot, if you cannot tell. Um. So if you're confused, <laughs> so are we. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, I'm bad at this. All right. Okay. Shut so up. example. Um. I had I had to get a player character killed because they don't want to play that character anymore, and I don't like making my care making my um, players forcibly play a character for story. Um, so it got to the point where I had the big bad guy introduce himself finally, and it got to where I was playing him, and my players got so angry at the big bad guy that they ignored their actual mission to go get something. And are not trying to track this guy down. They had so much social interaction with the big bad guy that they immediately hated him. You can change your motives. Like, this motive of this character was to just, you know, exist again. And now they just want to go kill somebody because they killed their sister. It's great. <laughs> well, yeah, like, in, in the campaign I'm running, um, social interaction made a bigger character. Mm -hmm. I, I, one that I was using, like, I had them go to a, a, a tavern, and they were supposed to just kind of go there and meet um, the captain of the ship they were supposed to go on. And ah! they ended up doing this big, like, musical performance, like, helping the guy on stage with his musical performance and stuff like that. Yeah. And the interactions between that, that, that character and theirs became a big part of the scene. Well, I didn't plan that at all. Oh, like, I didn't think that they would do that. Um, had no idea, and so 
the, the the character ended up being important, you know, like and he'll come up now probably again later in the adventure. I love her um, because he was, uh, you know, he was just a minstrel. I but now like. Because of the big show they put on and stuff like that, people will talk about it. So he's going to be more important now. And so, like, that was the whole thing where the the social interaction made <laughs> the character more important, even though they weren't intended to be important. Oh, that was my favorite. Character. So it was so nice. Man. That was that was that was fun. And so that was that was one way that social interaction um, can change the dynamic of the story in its own little way. It was supposed to be a bit of exploration and social interaction with a different character that turned into social action with more characters. It was it was very fun. It was it Social was, interaction is my favorite thing to do. And my favorite thing to DM it's my favorite thing to do. I make my players um do a lot of talking to each other in the game. I make my players talk to the merchants instead of just saying, I want to buy this and I just do it. I make them talk. It's something that's very vital to D and D that not a lot of people know. And a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of DMs, a lot of players skip over it, and I don't think that's that should happen. That's yeah. my very personal opinion. I'm about to put my heart on stage. God, I hate my life. <laughs> um, like, your players for DMs, people who want to DM, your players should want to talk with the people in this world. Your players should want to just know what's going on instead of just saying, I'm going to buy this. All right, cool. They want us. You want your players to be able to talk to the others, and having players who can't talk um, is interesting because the other players try to, you know, get them to talk. It makes for very good teamwork, especially with a group of play- people who've never played together before. You create bonds. You create, you know, friends. It's a very important part of D and D. Well, and that's well as designed yeah. by Fifth Edition, like. That's what they. I think that's really what what uh, Wizards of the Coast was shooting for, mm-hmm. was to have more of that social interaction, um, more of that exploration on top of the combat. Yeah, and one way t- and to use it is sometimes players want to do tasks more because it was an NPC they they like. Yeah, like if you, if a player gets attached to an NPC, um, then they're just gonna be like, "Well, I want to save this NPC," and now all of a sudden you got to play this NPC all the time, but. You gotta get them a, you gotta get them to like this one thing. Exactly. Yeah. And like, so, and, and like, they're all intertwined. That's kind of the, the 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 beauty of, like, I think a good campaign is is a is a good blend of all three. Obviously, mm-hmm. I, I I don't think I'd enjoy say a Coliseum campaign as much. Now I might enjoy. Um, a section of the campaign that was that took place in the Coliseum, for example, like a game session or two that was in the arena, like because we needed to win or to get some item or oh, yeah, to save somebody or whatever. Well, maybe you got stuck. Be a very interesting one shot, especially battling players, and you know, and because of the support classes, there can even be dynamics where like you pay off the cleric to heal you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you could have, and you could set up, I mean, like that, if you were having players going against each other, I, if I'd had an even number of players, I would have them like teams, like maybe two, groups of two or something like that, who would go in, maybe they mix it up and they do different combats and they could see how they work with each other. Yeah, how they work with each other and against each other. But yeah, and then like, and I would like ham up the whole Coliseum part and make the performance and the entertaining part, which are normally social interaction mm-hmm. skills. Part of the combat. Yeah. Anyways, but, yeah, the, the, that's the three pillars of the GD. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? Well, I thought we should we could go over uh, what skills you think are pertain to to each of the three pillars the most. Um, so the skills are most um, prevalent for um, combat is athletics, acrobatics, sometimes intimidation, sometimes stealth. Um, that's really it, though. Okay, so you want to yeah. So I, I can see that. When it comes to exploration, you have you, there's actually a lot more skills for exploration, uh, perception, um, uh, survival, obviously, stealth. Um, what else is there? I don't have a list in front of me of the skills. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just pull up the character sheets for all the skills. Yeah. Um, I'll put out some exploration. Yeah. Um. Nature, Arcana. 
Nature of Canada. Um, religion. They're about what the, the skills that really pertain to exploration. That's religion exploration. Because it's knowledge about religion. Okay. So it, it can help you in your exploration of things. Um, when it, investigation. Investigation, yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then there's the tools, of course, tool as well. Like, um, like I, I always kind of forgot about tools. Like, but those are things you're proficient in as well. Um, and those can affect a lot of your exploration about maybe crafting things or, or uh, like picking locks when it comes yeah, to yeah, disguise kit, disguise kits, yes, yeah. tools. That's a very that, that's a, disguise kit's a very social interaction. Ah. And, and there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of skills for social interactions, such as um, let's see here. We have uh, deception, insight, um, persuasion. Animal handling sometimes. Animal handling, yeah. Because I mean, it it, it is. Um, you don't really think of it that way, but it really is. History, intimidation, investigation. Yeah, I mean, medicine. a lot of the things that are in exploration are necessary to interact with other people. But yeah, like performance, performance especially. Yeah, that's that's a very heavy one, and of course intimidation. Yeah, um, sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. That's that's a very social interaction kind of skill. Well, well, stealth can sometimes be used to um avoid social interaction. It can also sometimes be the callus of social interaction, like if you're caught. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. So they all kind of blend together. Um, like, 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 we'll take, uh, cause you've seen a lot of Naruto, right? Or maybe Inuyasha might be a better one. Inuyasha. Inuyasha. We all watch, we watch all of Inuyasha. So Inuyasha has a lot of, of course, a lot of the social interaction between Inuyasha, Kagome, um, and the other characters. And, and yeah, and the other main party members. Um, so there's a lot of that, and then like, then they always go into these very combat-heavy situations, and Inuyasha likes to use the uh, uh, the method where they introduce a bad guy. Inuyasha, you know, attempts to cut them in half with the the wind scar, <laughs> and then we get this really long backstory that might be an episode or two long about why the bad guy is a bad guy and their motivations for everything like that. And so there's a lot of, like, that's kind of exploration in its own way because we're just learning about the character's past. And that tells us a little more about the world of Inuyasha. And, like, you know, you learn a lot about that. There's demons in that world. You learn, you know, like it takes place in feudal Japan. So there's a lot of of that going on and what the world looks like and things like that. And it's based on... Semi based on like you know the, the real world feudal Japan, but obviously with demons and magic and stuff. But I mean, I think Inuyasha actually would make a fairly interesting campaign. Like oh, if you were to run it, like I mean, I wouldn't try to run Inuyasha, but I mean, you know, like if you made a campaign that was kind of like Inuyasha, that would be an interesting D and D campaign. Yeah, based on um, Japanese legend is pretty. Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, it's basically like so. Taking something in the real world and then like turning it into a magical world in its own right, magic is, is fun, you know. And so that's that's a lot of it. So yeah, that's either way. That's that's the three pillars. We're gonna we're gonna kind of go through and talk about um, characters, like character classes uh, in particular, is where we're gonna start first. And we're gonna talk about how the the three pillars apply to that class, and then. Examples of subclasses that epitomize those three pillars really well, and how those subclasses utilize the three pillars. So, oh, it would be fun. That's good. That's going to be the general idea of, of this particular cast. So, um, I hope you uh, want to join us on our uh, adventure, basically, and uh, uh, pillars. See how you what you guys think of uh, the three pillars of D and D. So. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.
have something to say? No. Oh, you're just interrupting me. No, Jack I'm asked. sorry. I didn't mean to. I was just trying to like. Okay, I think they explored exploration though. Let's go to um, um, so little no, trap. All right. So come on. <laughs> okay, I am Emma. Um, centric. I am the, the only one who can talk to people in this group. Which you means it's funny because you can't see the top of the camera. Oh, so. I get nervous. All right, so right? start over, honey. Hi. <laughs> no. 